Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Um, I'm trying to switch over here to my screen. My name is Jill Harani, I'm the VP of Marketing at Metazoa. Welcome to the Metazoa Live Reset button, uh, where we chat with influencers in the Salesforce ecosystem about getting ahead, staying motivated, and moving society forward. So this episode of the Reset Button is called How to Build and Grow with Salesforce Accelerate. And we have today Mike Creeden, who's the Managing Director of Salesforce uh, Incubator Program, which is the Accelerate Program. Hi, Mike. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Jill. Thanks for having me. So glad you could uh, participate today. I know it's um, after a long weekend. A lot of people are out on vacation and so forth, so really appreciate your time. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm sure. Well, we, we've known each other for quite some time now, I think since the beginning of Metazoa. Yep. But uh, I've been in the Salesforce uh, ecosystem. I've been working at Salesforce now, going on 20 years. And uh, prior to that, I had other stints at other startups, including uh, one that I actually started as well. So I've always had an affinity for tech startups and from a Salesforce perspective, since we've been so focused on, you know, building an ecosystem to support our customers, um, working with partners since pretty much the early days of Salesforce. Okay. Wow. So you've been around a while. Um, so how long have you been part of the Accelerate program and um, what, why did that idea come to fruition? Sure. So, the Accelerate program is actually our version of, let's say, an accelerator, corporate accelerator for Salesforce partners. And it's actually a, an iteration or a second generation of what we initially started as an incubator program. And the incubator program itself was actually formed um, relatively early in the history of Salesforce. Just as we were coming to market with the App Exchange, we saw that there was a need to go beyond just developing apps, but also in developing businesses. Um, so our intention was always, you know, first for our customers to help drive innovation into the ecosystem. And the best way of doing that would be to provide, if you wish, the beacons of light for other um, entrepreneurs, uh, developers, and ISVs to actually come into the ecosystem. So that was actually way back in 2005 where, where we actually formed the idea. We launched it 2006, and then we ran that for a number of years incubating uh, many of the famous names that we have in the Salesforce ecosystem now. And then um, it's now been the second iteration where we actually relaunched the uh, incubator and now the accelerator program. Um, it's going on now five years in terms of its uh, current incarnation. Okay, five years, all right. Um, when Metazoa did it, I wanna say two or three years ago. It's so hard now. With yeah, I think it was 2018, I think was, was when Metazoa did it. Yeah, yeah. so um, talk to me a little bit about the different types. I know there's, there's a couple of different types, right, of programs? Yeah, so um, we've actually um, looked at ultimately what our customers were looking for and needed, and innovation continues to be you know, a top driver, if you wish, in terms of um, what our customers are looking for. But then also just in terms of us looking at the ecosystem itself, it was, it was apparent that we had many partners that were doing really well. Uh, for example, in terms of uh, being strong regional players or being a niche solution. And one of the things that we wanted to do is to help to promote those companies and help them expand and scale. So um, we've actually created two variants of the program now. The first one, which actually came out of the original purpose is called Build. And that's to help our first time app exchange entrepreneurs. These are independent software vendors that are bringing solutions to market. So the first time can always be daunting. And our objective there is to accelerate your time to market and ultimately help you understand the Salesforce ecosystem and customer base uh, to the degree where you'll be that much more successful as you enter the market. So that's our build program. And then we've added uh, more recently, and this is going back to roughly to the time that uh, Metazoa joined, uh, we added a grow program. And the intention of that program is to actually target growth stage app exchange partners, folks that we've seen that actually um, have, some have had some success and then help them with uh, specific insights, um, help support and otherwise in order for them to be able to effectively, you know, grow faster and ultimately scale to bring their uh, solutions 
um, not just to their local markets that they may have been serving, but ultimately, uh, ultimately to our global customer base. Got it. Yeah. Um, and so I know for us, it was, it was super beneficial, um, you know, for networking and being in person. Cause in 2018, we were actually, you know, coming to the towers, um, and, you know, doing some of it from virtual, but coming in there and doing some in person, which was really awesome. So what now are the plans? Are there any changes because of the pandemic? And, and how is that going to change uh, going forward? And let's start with Grow. Yeah. So, yeah, it started, starting with Grow was kind of interesting because we were actually launching a Grow cohort um, just as the pandemic hit. But by that point, I mean, since the time that you had joined, I'd say that maybe about 25% of the program was virtual, 75% in person. We would do, uh, you know, a weekly workshop uh, or, sorry, monthly workshop that was uh, three to five days. Um, so it was rel relatively intense in terms of our face-to-face -face time. Uh, by the time we actually um, entered into our fiscal year, which was into um, 2020, our, our last fiscal year, um, we had already moved about 60 to 70% of the program online. Um, and we were being very purposeful in terms in terms of our face-to-face -face time that we had. So the pandemic changed everything like it did for everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, we actually postponed the start of that particular cohort because we didn't know, let alone from a Salesforce business perspective, to how it was going to affect our customers and, and partners alike. Uh, but we did actually launch it um, after about a delay of about three or four weeks. And that kind of forced the hand at... Um, you know, us having to deliver the program virtually and ultimately our mindset, a transition from having to do it to actually embracing it and looking at it as, as a tool for us to be able to go beyond just the individuals, the, the partners that could physically partake in the program to expanding it to be, you know, without borders, so to speak. The, the only constraint was we had to select, you know, a convenient time where we can get folks multiple time zones away um, ultimately to be able to benefit from the program. But at this point, uh, we're hundred percent virtual and uh, we will be making changes in the future as the pandemic subsides. Uh, things are looking better in the US, but as we know, our partners from a global perspective um, are still, still have significant challenges um, uh, and the pandemic is still you know, very much with us. So we're very sensitive to that. So for the foreseeable future right now, we're 100% virtual. Got it. And I, I mean, that actually opens the door for a lot of companies anyway, right? Being startups and having the budget to be able to travel. So I'm sure that that makes a lot of uh, people happy that they can participate in something like this and not have to worry about the travel part. So um, that's good. So what, let's talk about a little bit, um, about the benefits of the program. Like what, you know, obviously Metazoa benefited a ton from it. I could talk about it, but why don't you tell, um, the folks who are listening, what they would, could expect from being a part of this program? For sure. I think if we think about it, there's three or four, I think, main components. I mean, we designed the program specifically so that, so that the the court, the court itself, the participants of the program can learn from subject matter experts, you know, on key topics of ecosystem success. So that could be from um, sales, marketing, um, uh, operational excellence across customer success and sales. Um, but fundamentally, what we try to do is we try to bring subject matter experts from within the company and the broader ecosystem um, from from industry in to talk with the cohort itself. So that, let's say, is the programming piece of it. Um, what I like to also see is, is that the interplay within the cohort itself. So everybody is signing on, if you wish, for anywhere from nine to 10 weeks of working, uh, nine to 12 weeks of working together. Um, during that time, it's very easy for us to, you know, provide the bonds that allow us to share more openly. You know, we're all learning about the same thing. So learning from each other in the cohort as we discuss these strategies and tactics um, ultimately benefit each other, right? Because it isn't just about learning from Salesforce, it's about us collectively learning together. Um, third piece I would say is the individuals that we bring to bear from an advisory perspective. So we provide for mentoring and advising within the context of the program. The advisor pool in particular are sets of subject matter experts within Salesforce and also the broader industry 
such that as we're working through various topics in the program, you can tap into this collective brain trust um, and get this uh, advisory um, uh, um, insights uh, from these experts. And then the, I think the last piece also is, I mean, especially for companies such as yourself, understanding that that access is almost like a privilege that's provided to you and being able to leverage that to in fact extend your own networks within Salesforce, of course, you know, building those uh, key relationships that are gonna go on for years, but also within the cohort and the broader community itself. Um, one of the things that we're looking forward to getting back to um, are some of our networking events where we can actually take our cohort and co-mingle, if you wish, with folks at Salesforce, uh, the customer base, and also um, other partners as well. So that's a big piece of it. Right. <clears throat> that's how we benefit. I mean, I, I feel like um, after the program, even during the program, I tried to, you know, network as much as possible. But even after the program was over, um, you know, reaching out to folks that came and spoke and maybe I didn't even have a conversation with, but was able to reach out in an email, introduce myself. And, um, you know, people have been very open to helping and answering questions and just kind of guiding. So it's been huge for us. Um, I've even had um, someone on the live on the reset button that I met in the program. So um, yeah, it's been huge for us. So love it. Um, what, so what is the, what do companies have to do to qualify for? Let's, let's talk about grow. What, what is the uh, threshold for qualifying? Yeah. So particularly with grow, as I mentioned before, is that we're looking to help partners that have had some success in the ecosystem. And we feel that if we put a little bit of, uh, you know, wood behind the arrow in terms of supporting these companies, we can help them grow faster. Our belief fundamentally for these companies is that they're doing well and they will continue to do well. How can we accelerate that success? So if we think about it, um, just in terms of selection, unlike other programs where there's hard set, let's say thresholds uh, for selection, we kind of have a more holistic view in terms of the uh, partner itself. So what I've coined a phrase internally of looking for partners that are at app exchange initial traction. And what I mean by that is, is that when we look at it from the Salesforce line of business perspective, specifically through the lens that we can actually see that success, which is the app exchange um, business itself, um, that would be categorized as, as let's say post product market fit from the app exchange solution perspective. They've had experience in terms of selling, not to a few customers, but more than that, so that they have some repeatability in their sales motion as well as their onboarding of customers so that we know that we, you know, they, they're getting that flywheel going perhaps, or maybe they have fully developed that. We can work with that um, specifically. Um, the other proxy is uh, kind of proven market success. If we think about it from just a sales perspective, um, and that's really going to be more dictated from a business perspective. So if we're looking at, let's say, metrics of ACV generated in the last year, that gives us another indicator in terms of where they're at. And um, it's also a proxy for their ability to execute, that if they have sufficient cash flow, that they can benefit from the program itself. Um, the other aspects that we look for are key growth metrics, right? So it could be that, let's say, ACV is just starting to kick in. Um, from the perspective of success, but from a growth point of view, that they're rapidly growing. So that's also another indicator for us. And then the last piece of it is that element of that ability to execute, if you wish, can they benefit from the program? Would they be able to um, allocate the time, take that very necessary time to actually invest on the strategic side and, and collectively work together on building out what would be that next generation plan for the company as they come out of the program. So mm -hmm. those are kind of the uh, three things that, that we look at from a high level. And are, is there an interview process, Mike? Um, yes, yeah, so there's actually, the, the first thing that you do is uh, apply for the program. The application process will give us a whole host of, of if you wish, uh, uh, metrics and also background on your company. We ask that you provide us, if you wish, like a pitch deck, which ultimately will be um, used to discern, you know, in one in one setting, if you wish, 
you know, the makeup of the company, the background of the, uh, of the key individuals from a management perspective, ultimately what your ideas are in terms of why you want to get into the program and what you want to do in the program. But that gives us that, that snapshot um, of that individual. The next thing is, is that from a, uh, from a selection process, what we do is we go through various rounds internally of discussing the applicants, working into a set of logical contenders. And then at the point that we feel that we have an applicant pool that we'd like to pull in, then what we do is we do a last round of interviews. We actually do call downs and then we talk with the key individuals who have actually submitted the applications. And that'll give us a good idea for intent, commitment, and ultimate fit for the program. And that's just so that, you know, nobody's w really wasting their time. And in fact, that we know that both of us can actually invest the time that's necessary to actually impart the value that we're trying to do. Do you have a certain amount of companies that you are trying to reach or, you know, have participate or is there a cutoff or how do you do that? Yeah. So what we do is, is that we source, we look to source um, 20 companies within each cohort. Um, and at this point uh, that we're at right now, um, you know, that's our kind of sweet spot, our magic number uh, from a budget and also resource perspective. Um, but also just in terms of building, if you wish, that that cohort community, you know, that we feel that we can actually start to get some interesting dialogue going. Hopefully there'll be good connections, even some business mm -hmm. development work that's done within the cohort itself. Mm -hmm. And how do people, are you inviting people, are you looking sort of ahead for the next cohort, looking at potential companies and, and reaching out to them? Or are people, you know, um, supposed to seek out uh, how to apply, um, what's your process for that? Yeah, so what I would tell everybody is that if you're interested in the program, whether it's build or grow, um, that you follow us um, specifically, there, there, there's a couple of points that, that that you can continue to get information. One is the partner community. The other one is our, our app exchange handle on Twitter. The other one is to you know go back and visit the um, Accelerate page on the Salesforce website, which is salesforce.com slash accelerate. Um, we have information on the program there. And when we're actually sourcing for um, open cohorts, there'll be an apply button there. Uh, right now, we're actually sourcing, we're seeking applicants for our build cohort, which is coming up at the end of August. And then later this year, uh, we're going to be having another grow cohort. So for all the folks that are interested in grow, stay tuned because in the month of September, we'll actually be launching the, uh, the application process for that uh, November cohort. And how many do you do, say, how many of each do you do each year? So it depends, it depends upon the year. So last, yeah, I mean, the pandemic year itself, we felt that there was a, a more pressing need to help our partners. So we actually increased the number of cohorts that we did. And last year, we actually did four, four cohorts. Oh, wow. Traditionally, we do three cohorts a year. Okay. Um, and um, they're of varying duration. So typically, it's somewhere between nine and 12 weeks for the cohort duration. Um, last year, if you wish, we spun up a cohort very quickly with four weeks notice. And we actually did a very short program, a five week program specifically to align with our work.com efforts, where we were trying to uh, you know, introduce solutions for customers to allow them to be able to deal with the pandemic and not just be able to react to you know the the business circumstances that the pandemic provided, but actually pivot into and then hopefully thrive as as they were were able to then reopen and um, come out of the pandemic as well, which is still an ongoing exercise. It is. Um, I was going to ask you that. So, is that a specific now a different one for Work.com, or it's kind of all lumped together? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, fundamentally, work.com, what that was is that was, if you wish, an accelerator for pivoting into the pandemic. Okay. You know, the pandemic provided significant challenges for everyone, um, but it also provided opportunities for those folks that were able to actually see where that opportunity was. I mean, obviously, just from, you know, uh, uh, a testing perspective, imagine all of the logistical support around um, testing, whether it be scheduling, tracking, tracing. I mean, there, there's so many things that were needed and many of our partners were able to actually pivot into that. 
um, business continuity ended up coming to the forefront. Um, digital transformation, you know, where it was a luxury and a multi-year project mm -hmm. for many companies had to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. So again, there was, um, if you wish, this pivot that was needed for many companies to be able to take advantage of that. We, we were very fortunate in terms of our customer base, for example, just on the digital transformation piece of it. Many were, of course, you know, doing this for many of the forward thinking companies. Mm -hmm. And the pivot was, in fact, ultimately to see that this opportunity wasn't just for the larger companies or for the companies that were actually undergoing said digital transformation for their businesses, but now it was a necessity for all. So mm -hmm. how would they actually scale their offerings uh, from a pricing packaging perspective, but also from a reach point of view? So that actually provided significant opportunities. And now we've actually transitioned this year into um, helping with the mindset of moving from reactive into the looking at what the um, kind of uh, the commercial makeup, if you wish, of what this new next normal is going to look like. How are they going to ultimately rebuild their businesses and help their customers, you know, rebuild their businesses stronger and actually to be able to be more that much more resilient um, in the future as well. So this year we're actually focusing our grow program is, is actually focusing on aligning with where Salesforce has been very successful um, through the pandemic and into this year as well, which is around industries. So if you wish the theme that we have for our grow cohorts is actually aligning with industries and that will help not just the partners that have self-selected for a particular industry or a particular set of industries, but also perhaps some of the horizontal partners that are seeing some success in a particular industry for them to be able to double down on that. Nice. And in that way, they'd be able to um, work with Salesforce, but also be where Salesforce is in the market in terms of kind of interest and action. And um, I think that we're already seeing, starting to see some fruits from, fruits from that labor. Uh, we just closed out our first growth cohort of the year, um, and we're looking to actually reconstitute that same program later this year as well. Nice. And so let's talk a little bit about the build program. Um, what is that? Tell me what the difference is between the two. Um, you know, is it sure. something that you you are looking at companies that have have actually started their partnership with Salesforce, or they're thinking about starting, or where they're at? So I think I think both. I think j just in terms of you know the 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 nature of the ecosystem itself. I find when I go out, I mean, it's been challenging over the last year and a half. So typically when I go out into the general startup ecosystem, there's a high level of, uh, of awareness about Salesforce. And then to a degree, there's those folks that are already planning to work in the Salesforce ecosystem and with Salesforce at some point in their future. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide, if you wish, a fast ramp a, or a fast on ramp for those companies to be able to get into the ecosystem. So part of our challenge is getting the message out to um, startups who have yet to come into the Salesforce ecosystem, or at least from an app exchange perspective, they have yet to actually leverage the app exchange to reach customers. Um, so that's one piece of it. And I think that a best fit perspective is not gonna be at the point of ideation, but actually at the point that the startups have committed to a particular, if you wish, um, solution industry or category um, they've actually taken the first steps to actually create their companies. And in many cases, they've taken that next first step, if you wish, in terms of the Salesforce piece of it, in terms of actually learning about Salesforce from a platform perspective, product perspective, and ecosystem perspective. So that can be demonstrated, you know, by um, either, you know, using some of our, our free access points for developer edition, for example, um, to um, taking that first step in terms of um, joining the partner program, which is free to join. That gives you access to our, our partner ecosystem, our partner community, where you can skill up, learn about um, not just building an app, but ultimately uh, marketing and supporting customers in the Salesforce ecosystem. So there's a lot of things that, that um, startups, ISVs can do even prior to taking that bull step forward in terms of, hey, I'm going to be building this solution with Salesforce. So if we think about it, I don't want to really, you know, box it in in terms of 
these are the ideal candidates because we've taken folks relatively early in their journey. They've had, let's say, an MVP of sorts. So let's say the next step from an idea, they validated with some customers, but they really don't have any line of revenue at this point from selling in the Salesforce ecosystem. Even in some cases, you know, they're just in pilot phases with customers. And then we've also seen um, folks that have self-selected, if you wish, started their partnership with Salesforce. They may be somewhere along that journey. And for whatever reason, it's either taking them longer than they thought it would be taking them, or they feel that they could actually use some help in terms of getting to market quicker. And since that, that's our stated objective of the program to really accelerate that time to market, um, that becomes also an ideal fit for that candidate. And then our stated objective, if you wish, in terms of having that informal contract with the startup, it's that do you feel that you can enter market within three to six months of graduating from the program? So we love, we love to see in our track record right now is that within, within, three, within three months of the program right now, we see about two thirds of our graduates actually enter market with their app exchange solutions. And ultimately what we wanna do is we wanna help everyone within that three to six month window be able to, to reach market. Nice. <clears throat> and are there any other qualifications or things that you're looking for to fill the cohort? Yeah, so one of the things that we were also looking at um, with Build is, is that we were very much looking at it through, if you wish, a lens of innovation. That we were looking for, you know, the entrepreneurs who were really going to be the game changers in terms of developing new solutions, not just necessarily, you know, adding value to, for example, Salesforce solutions or third-party solutions that were all out there already, but ultimately um, introducing solutions to other parts of the enterprise, um, delivering solutions to maybe different personas within the enterprise. Um, that was, if you wish, our, our modus operandi before. And then last year with the social unrest specifically in the US, um, you know, the, you know, with the George Floyd um, killing and um, just the, the, the need, if you wish, for us to see social justice and change. Mm -hmm. Salesforce, one of the high values that we have at Salesforce is equality. And we were thinking that as a large company, what could we actually do to actually put our principles, our values into action? And then one of the things that we looked at was the build program itself. If what in fact we're doing is helping startups get to market faster in the Salesforce ecosystem, why not use a lens, if you wish, from an equality and equity perspective and actually look for talented entrepreneurs who perhaps for whatever reason have not been provided with the opportunity to be able to work with a company like Salesforce to co-mingle with other startups in that cohort scenario, having access, for example, to funding and investors. Um, so we felt that there was this pressing need to do that. So this year we actually made a, uh, a bold statement internally that what we're gonna be doing is, is that our build cohorts are going to be sourced 50% um, from underrepresented groups from a founder perspective. So what we're doing is, is that we're looking to actually leverage the outreach that we can through our allies in the startup communities themselves um, and effectively source such that we can have 50% of our founders coming from um, underrepresented groups going forward. So our first build cohort for, for that test, if you wish. So we actually did a, 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 a cohort specifically for black founders at the beginning of this year. Nice. Um, and that was and that was very successful for us. We actually through that cohort We actually did that with ten companies and what's really interesting is is that coming out of that cohort We actually have other programs if you wish think about it as like graduate programs for for promising entrepreneurs mm -hmm. So we already have three partners that are consi being considered for that one very active We have numerous of those companies that have direct sponsors within Salesforce itself so just the sheer level of talent that we've been able to source from outside, let's say, of known communities is just phenomenal. So that was really a good, um, a good affirmation for us. Mm -hmm. And we're looking to take that to the next level in terms of looking at not just, for example, the Silicon Valley startup, but looking for talent wherever it is, mm -hmm. specifically within underrepresented groups.
that has to be pretty difficult, I imagine, getting out there and getting the word out there to people. Um, what, what kind of questions, let's say somebody is going to start the application process, what are some of the things that they could expect to see in that application? I know you said that you, you, you're looking for, you know, different things and maybe, you know, one company doesn't have exactly, you know, everything that is part of the question, the process, but what kind of questions would someone um, expect to see when they start that process? Yeah. Well, first of all, I invite everybody to go. The application process for the next build cohort is actually um, up and running right now. And you can go to p.force.com. So that's P is in partner. Force.com slash accelerate me. Um, if you go there, we have an overview. There's an FAQ there provided as well. And then there's a link for you to start your application. Good. In terms of the application itself, what we're doing is we're looking to, to find as much or, or to get as much information, um, not just on what it is that you're doing as a company or as a product, but also the people behind the company as well. So some of the questions that we're asking is specifically about the backgrounds of the founders or key management within the company. Uh, we're, we're wanting to know where you are from a startup lifecycle perspective, from a product lifecycle uh, point of view. Um, so for example, I was mentioning that we uh, uh, are very much inclined to take folks that are in the MVP phase, but where are you in that phase? You know, have you actually transacted with customers? And if so, you know, what does your revenue look like or revenue run rate look like at this point? Um, so we try to find as much information as we can to make an informed decision, but a lot of it from the build perspective is, is that we're looking for um, two things. One is, is the company fit for the ecosystem? You know, is this going to be something that we feel that is going to be not of just interest, you know, to you or even to Salesforce? Is it going to be of interest to the Salesforce customer base? Mm -hmm. So that's one of it. The other piece is uh, the ability to execute. You know, looking at that, you know, it's just as important, let's say, on the growth side. Um, but on the build side, you know, where are you in the startup life cycle? Is it just, uh, you know, an individual, you know, uh, two folks, you know, co-founders who are starting out? Or is there enough of, a, of an employee base, if you wish, um, for you to be able to act upon the inputs that we're providing? So there's a development side of things and a business go-to-market um, side as well. And you have the resources with which um, you can actually benefit from the program at the stage that you're at. So that's kind of high level in terms of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Anybody can start an application. It isn't, uh, there's no, um, if you wish, gate ahead of it. So if you go to p.force.com slash accelerate me, um, click on that apply now and you'll be able to review the entire application. Can you apply to, let's say you don't get into one cohort, can you reapply? Absolutely. Uh, okay. And it's one of the things. So what we do is we have a collective pool that we track with our applicants. So we can only select, as I said, in the build cohort, a, a total of 20. We actually ask you just to, to further the discussion in terms of some of the um, aspects of the company that, that we want to know about is from a diversity and inclusion perspective, what are you actually doing today? From a founder perspective, you know, we do ask a question, a voluntary question, you know, if you're, if, if you've come from underrepresented groups in tech, tell us, you know, specifically what, what the background is there mm -hmm. that helps us from a sourcing as well. If we think about it in terms of that 50, 50 mix mm -hmm. within the cohort itself. And, um, I think, uh, beyond that, um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think where, where I was going with that. What, in terms of the question you were asking, um, I, I was asking if people could reapply, um, no, to, to reapply. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so w with respect to the reapplication process, what we do is we have our pool of applicants when we kick off the next round, um, for, for example, build or grow, what we do is we actually reach out directly to those companies. We actually send a direct email with a link for them to reapply. Okay. Of course we have the information on hand, but if anything has changed, you can update your application at that point. Right. Okay. And who typically participates? Is it like the, the founders or, you know, person who's running marketing or sales or all of the above? Mm -hmm. So from a build perspective, we tend to see uh, founders or let's call them strategic slash C-level types. 
So if it's a small company, that might be the person that's overseeing marketing um, from a development standpoint, engineering or development. Um, for a little bit of a larger company or for a company that already has a line of business and they're opening up a new line of business with Salesforce, it might be the designated alliance person um, for that. Um, so that's on the build side. So that's very, and we, we try to aim the content at that C-level, founder level, a more strategic you know, thinker within the company mm -hmm. itself. On the growth side, it's very much tied to key personas of interest. So if we think about from a growth stage company, it could be that there's a lot of opportunity, let's say around marketing, in which case the point of contact would typically be a marketing or product marketing person. Um, it could also be from a strategic perspective, they already have a, a business development alliances person that's already aligned with Salesforce. That individual wants to own all aspects of the business. They will be a key participant as well. And one of the things to also note within both of the programs, especially since it's now 100% virtual, is we actually encourage the individuals, the points of contact with the program itself to include the key personas as we're going through, if you wish, the, the key elements of the curriculum, our discussion points, you know, to include the, the persons of interest within their company. So, you know, if we're, if we're talking about, you know, positioning, messaging, product marketing, things like that, get the marketing people, you know, involved. If we're talking about, um, um, uh, technical aspects, architecting a solution, building for app exchange, leveraging core technology, you know, not just from a time to market, but also from a carrying cost, because all technology that's leveraged from a Salesforce perspective, um, actually, I shouldn't say all, most technology that's leveraged from a Salesforce perspective is free for the, is for the, um, for the partner to exploit. So what we make sure is, is that within the build program that we effectively impart that knowledge such that folks are not reinventing the wheel, so to speak, that they mm -hmm. can never actually leverage that technology. So matching the personas to, to the program now, I think that is something that's uh, uh, a little bit more novel. It's new since the pandemic, but I think that that's a great way to actually take advantage of the program. So if we have 20 companies, it's very common for us in, in a cohort, it's very common for us to see anywhere from 30 to 40 attendees within each session that it is that we're doing because you know they'll provide the invites to other folks in the uh, in the company. Right. Well, I mean, from my perspective, I think you know this the stuff that really stuck out for me uh, going through the program, not not just the networking part, but also um, all the different tools that were provided, where you know it helped us align more with Salesforce. So, you know, just learning a lot of the internal um, ways of, of Salesforce, how Salesforce does things, and then being able to take that information and fold it into how we do business internally was, um, you know, was a, a amazing for us. So, um, so anything else you want to share, any advice that you would give to um, folks that are interested in this program, whether it be grow or build, um, any last minute thoughts or advice? Yeah, so, well, one is, you know, be curious. Go to p.forest.com slash accelerate me. Um, check out the application, the FAQ. It'll give you more indication there. On the build side, it's open to any and all partners or potential partners, as I said. On the growth side, one of the things to think about is at what point in your journey, uh, it, think about in terms of the ascension of you as a partner of Salesforce, really having made a, uh, uh, a play, if you wish, in the ecosystem. At what point in the journey do you feel that would be most beneficial for you to work with Salesforce in order to be able to nail your uh, your key value proposition um, and really take advantage of the global reach that Salesforce has in terms mm -hmm. of actually um, helping you grow your business. So I think th those are a couple of the things um, and you know to continually get involved. I mean the the alumni network for the Accelerate program right now is uh, 138, 138 or 139 companies, so something around there. One of the things that we're going to be looking to do going into next year is, you know, hopefully being able to get back together again, mm -hmm. networking of networking events and other events that we can actually bring alumni together and um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, create this uh, virtuous cycle 
of giving in terms of uh, you know sharing our experiences and expertise amongst uh, amongst ourselves, because I think that that's one of the special things of the Salesforce ecosystem itself. Um, you know, I think that Metazoa is doing a great job. You know, as exemplified by this uh, podcast. You know, you're going about sharing a lot of your expertise and experience um, with other entrepreneurs, would be partners and ISVs, and I think that that's great to see. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I owe that, um, I think, to the program as well, because I feel like, you know, I've learned so much from ISV partners that we met during that whole process, and we continue to meet more, probably because of that, um, the cohort that we were in, because you just meet more through other ISV partners, and just learning and leveraging each other is the best way to go. And I think this you know, reset button was really just to help others in the ecosystem that are trying to figure things out and, and learn, um, you know, from different people. So uh, I so appreciate you being on today and uh, walking through this with us. And I, um, I hope that you enjoy your summer, Mike, and you have some fun plans this summer. Um, so thank yeah. you so much for being with us. Thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, and, and same to you and everybody over at Metazoa. Hope, hope, it's a, hope it's a great summer, healthy, and uh, hopefully a good growth opportunity for you guys as well. Absolutely. So I think that's it, everyone. Don't miss our next episode on August 31st at 10 a.m. Pacific time, where we will talk to Andrew, Andrew Mortimer and Tom Appleton about the importance of org management. And I think we're going to get into a little bit of what org management really is. So um, don't miss it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.